Hey everyone, I am so excited to share with you today and I'm actually going to start something new today. When I was in prison, I learned so many things. God really opened my eyes for the Bible in so many new ways. And I saw that the Bible is one story, is one book from beginning to the end. I already always knew that, but it just became so much more clear to see that it's not just an Old and New Testament, it's one story with different covenants. Yes, but it's still one story. And the story of the Jews is not only the story of the Jews, but we in Christ are baptized into him who is the seed of Abraham and David, and therefore is our story today. And I want to share about that. And one of the things I've done since I came out of prison is that I've been sharing a few things like here and there and jump a little around. And I actually feel that I need to just go back and start in the beginning and then take the time I need and then just start in the beginning and move from Genesis and forward to Revelation. And today we're going to look at um, something very important to understand the whole Bible. And we're actually going to start in Genesis with something. But before we look at Genesis, I just want to start in Revelation how it all ends. And again, this is not just to give you head knowledge. This is to set you free. This is to give you understanding of the hope we have in Christ. Give you understanding of the day of the Lord when he returns and what is going to happen. And I did not understand a lot of it before I came into prison. But while I was in there, I really saw how the Bible became alive. And together with this, it just gave me so much hope and joy and uh, excitement for the day of the Lord and what is going to happen. So I hope you are ready. In Revelation, in the end of Revelation, we can see the fall of Babylon in chapter 18. We can see in chapter 19 that Jesus, he come on the white horse and we see he will rule, rule him with an iron scepter. And then we see in chapter 19 also that the beast uh, was captured, uh, that is Antichrist and the false prophet, and how Antichrist and the false prophet was thrown into the lake of fire. We also see that uh, Aintu came down in chapter 20 and sees the dragon, that is Satan, and how he was bound for a thousand years. Then you read about the thousand year of reign in chapter 20, and then Satan he's being uh, released for a very short time. And then we uh, see how all the nations go to war, and how God comes and destroys him. And we read that uh, Satan now is thrown into the lake of fire where the Antichrist and the false prophet have been thrown before the thousand year of reign. Then we have the judgment of the great white throne where the books is open. And we're going to look at all of that later. Uh, not in this lesson, but later, later, later. And then we see that those whose name is not written in the book of life, they will be thrown into the lake of fire. That is the second death, where we already see that Satan, Antichrist and the false prophet is. And then we see the new heaven and new earth. And I want to read something here. Chapter 21, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautiful and dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice speak from the throne saying, and this is what I want to look at today. Look, God's dwelling place is now amongst the people and he will dwell with them. There will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more, no more death, no mourning and crying and pain. For the old order of things have passed away. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. They will be his people and God himself will be with them. Or God himself will be present 
with them. He will walk with them. Why? Because God's dwelling place is now amongst the people. And this is what I want to talk about today. And this is very, very excited when you see it. God's dwelling place is now among the people. Another translation is this. Now God has made his home with the people. So God's dwelling place is now here on earth. Here on earth. When God makes a new heaven and a new earth, God makes his dwelling place here on earth. God makes his home here on earth. We often talk about when like people die, like now I am going to be with God. I'm going home to be with God. Like the home God has is in heaven. But it's not so much us who die and go home to be with God where he is. It's actually God who come down here and make his dwelling place, his home down here on earth. And it's very interesting when you start to see it, it is God, your kingdom come here on earth. Your will be done here on earth. Like God's kingdom, God's will as it is in heaven. So we need to change our way of speaking instead of like, hey, I'm going to heaven and heaven, 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 instead of understanding there is God's kingdom here on earth. <laughs> is heaven on earth. God is going to come down and make his dwelling place among us. And this leads me to the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning of Genesis, you can read that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That was the first heaven and earth we are living in right now. But as we read before, God is going to later create a new heaven and earth where God's dwelling place would be. But here, when God created the heaven and earth, my question is, why did he do that? Why did God create heaven and earth first? For the first, in the first sake, was it for his sake or was it for our sake? Why did God create it? You can then read about the creation and Adam and Eve and the fall. And something happened with the fall. And we see there chapter 3 in Genesis verse 8. We read here that when the fall happened, then the man and the wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid. God, he was walking amongst them. God in the garden was walking in the garden amongst them. He had a dwelling place amongst the people in the garden, as he will have in the heaven, new heaven and new earth. And the last chapter in Bible, the next chapter we read about the new garden that's been created with the tree of life and everything. So God created man, I believe because God wanted to dwell amongst us. He wanted to be with us. He wanted to have a people of his own. He could walk a month and be with. He wanted to create a home here on earth amongst us. But fall, the fall happened and everything got destroyed. They hid from the presence of God. They hid and they were thrown out of the garden. And their redemption started. Noah, he built the ark, but as soon as Noah came out of the ark, there was a problem one more time. Sin was now in the world. It was a fallen world. And because of sin, God could not have his dwelling place amongst the people anymore. Why? Because of sin and because God, he is holy. But God gave a promise to Abraham, a promise of being God's people. <laughs> like he had in the beginning as he is going to have in the end. God wants a people and he gave a promise to Abraham, to Isaac, Jacob, there was Israel, 
the 12 tribes of Israel and we have the story of Joseph and we're going to look at that another time. Then we have Moses and Moses come in and what we're going to look at today is, is focus on the dwelling place because Moses came and set the people free and there we see the gospel all over the place. And then in Exodus, when he came to Mount Sinai, you see that he actually came with the Ten Commandments in chapter 20. And then you can read about um, some of the laws. And then chapter 24 in Exodus, you see the covenant being confirmed. And there in chapter 25, verse 8, we read this. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell amongst them. Make this tabernacle and all the furniture exactly as the pattern I will show you. So God came to Moses and he said that he wanted people now to make a sanctuary so God could dwell there. And he should make this tabernacle, it's like a big tent. Why? Because God wanted to dwell amongst the people. The whole idea from the beginning, God want to be amongst the people. And there God called him to make the sanctuary with the tabernacle so God could dwell there amongst the people. And this is actually the same word, the tabernacle, we read about in the Old Testament. Chapter 25, you read about the uh, tabernacle and what needed to the table, the lampstand, and so on and so on. But if we go back to Revelation 21, as I read before, look, God's dwelling place is now amongst the people and he will dwell there. The word there is actually tabernacle. And we see that in King James. So God's tabernacle is now amongst the people and he will dwell with them. What we see there in the Old Testament is a shadow, is a picture of the heavenly. <laughs> and what we are going to see coming down from heaven and it's all about that God want to make a dwelling place amongst us. God want to walk with us. He want us to be his people. He want to be our God. And Hebrews chapter 8, we read this. That they serve in a sanctuary. There is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he built, it was about to build a tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern I show you on the mountain. So the tabernacle we read in the Bible was something God showed him. And that is a shadow of what is in heaven. And that is a shadow of what is going to come here on earth a shadow of the new covenant also we are living in. The tabernacle, as we read, that is like a big tent they could use when they travel around. And that was God's way with the offering to come and be with the people. That was God's way of being with the people with the tabernacle. But then later to David, he promised that he would build a house of his own, a temple. And then we see Solomon who built the temple of Solomon because Solomon is the son of David. But the real son of David is again a shadow and a picture of what is going to come. The real son of David is Jesus Christ. The New Testament starts like this, that Jesus is the son of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus is the son of David who built the house to God. And how did he build that house where God could dwell among us? He did that with living stones and that is you and me. And 
if you ha when you have this in mind when you read through the Old Testament that God had a dwelling place among the people, he wanted them to be his people and he wanted to be their God. And then the fall happened. And then Moses came with the, the tabernacle and we have the, the most holy and all of that. But all shadow and picture of what is coming. There is offering, there is blood, there is sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, but all pictures. But then we have Christ, uh, uh, we have David later, whose son built the temple of Solomon. But again, all pictures and shadow. And then we have Jesus Christ, who went to the holies of the holies in heaven. Not the shadow and picture here on earth, but the real one, with not with blood of animals, but with his own blood. And through him, the whale was torn in two. So we can now enter into God's present and this is where we are now but still we don't see him face to face we don't walk with him face and walk with him and see him face to face like adam and eve before the fall but one day it's going to be like that again let's let's i want to read something more here and end up with this second corinthians 2 Corinthians 6, here we read about that, um, it's talking about, um, about a warning on idolatry. And there we read there, and we start verse 14 here. Now let's read verse 16. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as he said. I will live with them and walk amongst them. I will be their God and they will be my people. So that is the promise. I will live with them. I will walk amongst them. I will be their God and they will be my people. That is, this go the whole way back to Genesis. And then the next verse, therefore... Come out of them, come out from them and be separated, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. Today we touch Jesus and we become holy. Like when, uh, when the woman who was had the issue of blood, she touched Jesus. It was not him who, her who defiled him, but out of Jesus went the power to clean her. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says God. Therefore, since you have those promises, my friends, let us purify ourselves from everything in that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reference for God. I will live amongst them, says the Lord. Therefore, be holy as God, he is holy. And I'm going to talk about that next time, about seeing God's face to face. Be holy as I am holy. Without holiness, no one can see the Lord. But we will never see him on this side of eternity in the same way as we are going to see him on the other side of eternity. Why? Because God's kingdom is not yet here. And God have not yet completely made his dwelling place among us. But that is the good news of the kingdom. And that is what we are longing for. Heaven is not just about the, 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 the heavenly Jerusalem, beautiful city we can read about in the end of Revelation. But it's about God. God is there. And God wants to walk with us. God wants us to be his people and he wants to be our God and he wants us to have relationship. He wants to walk with them as we read here. I will live with them and walk amongst them. Adam and Eve experienced it. But then fall came. Moses was allowed to see the body, but not his face even. Even Moses could not see his face and live. But what we're going to look at next time one day we are going to see his face. 
see the face of God. And we will not die. Why? Because we are out of this body and we have a heavenly body and everything is good and perfect as it was before the fall and the curse and everything that happened. But right now, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and God is, and we should purify ourselves. Why? Because without holiness, no one can see God. We need to be the bride ready for our Lord Jesus to return. But I think it's so beautiful. I know there was a lot of scripture here, but it's so beautiful. If you have in mind when you read the Old Testament, that why do we have the tabernacle? Why do we have the offering? Why do we have all the blood? Because God wants to make a dwelling place amongst the people. He wants to walk among us. <laughs> but because of sin, he cannot. Like when the tabernacle, El Diag of the covenant was, was stolen by the Philistines, plagues came all over the, the camp and many, many Philistines died and they took the tabernacle and said, El Diag of the covenant and said, we don't want it anymore. We don't want God's presence among us. Why? Because we are sinful people and we will get killed. But one day, everything is going to change. And that is the gospel. It starts with God creating heaven and earth. Why? Because God wants to have our people and God wants to dwell amongst us. And then the fall came. And then we see a lot of things in the Old Testament. There's shadows and pictures of what is coming. And then Christ came and Christ went into the holies of the holies in heaven with his own blood. So we, through him as the whale, can enter into the presence of God. But even we have fellowship with God here on this side of eternity. And we have. It's still not there yet. But the good news is one day God's kingdom is going to come near. It's going to come here on earth. We don't die and just go to heaven. As what we often being told, uh, no, heaven is going to come down here. God is going to create a new heaven and earth here. And there he will make his tabernacle amongst the people, his dwelling place amongst the people. And there we will be his people, and he will be our God. And if you have that in mind when you read the Bible, it's beautiful. If you have that in mind when you live here on earth, it's beautiful. God wants to walk with us. And this is what Christianity is all about. It's not a lot of ritual uh, about rituals and going to church on Sunday. It's about knowing him. This is the eternal life that you know the one true God and him you send Jesus Christ to walk with God. And we can do that today through Jesus Christ. So this is what I want to share. I know there was a lot of information here, but I'm going to build on this next Sunday. See you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.